TikTok has done the work and exposed Corey Gamble as being a high-level fixer, the Olivia Pope of Calabasas. Baby, all this time, we thought Corey Gamble was shucking and jiving, doing the thing, literally being bought and sold, paid property for Kris Jenner. But baby, maybe Kris Jenner got with Corey because he was the plug. Baby, listen, we got receipts. TikTok pulled all of them. With no further ado, I'm going to let y'all get at it. Don't forget, I'll be going live later on to talk about this. Also, this young lady who is exposing it all is Becca Day. It's B-E-K-A-H-D-A-Y-Y on TikTok. If y'all are on TikTok, go ahead and follow her and me. I'm on TikTok too, Tisa Tells, because baby, she deserves all her flowers. She pulled every single receipt. And all I got to say is, how's Corey going to play this off? Anyway, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. Meet me after the jump. All right, let's get into this. All right, it's a good one and it's a long one. Make sure you listen to the end because she ties everything together. It's deep. And like Kanye said, it's Corey CIA because, baby, <laughs> yeah, that big hip. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Anyway, y'all, let's get into it. Okay, I've collected my thoughts, I've done a lot of research, and we have to talk about Corey Gamble. Corey Gamble is surrounded by so much controversy and mystery, I think we should go back to the very beginning. Because truly, who is Corey Gamble and how did he become so closely associated with figures such as Jeff Bezos, the Kardashian Empire, Rock Nation, and of course, P. Diddy? As always, let's go back to the very beginning. Corey Gamble was born on November 10th of 1980 in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta is where he would grow up and spend the majority of his childhood and early adulthood as well. Corey attended Westlake High School in Atlanta where he would nickname himself Mr. Dependable and he was the captain of his football team. Corey found himself often being praised by school faculty and staff for being able to manage a rigorous schedule, being the captain of the football team, while also managing to keep good grades in school. After graduating from high school in 1999, Corey attended Morehouse College where he pursued and received his business degree. After graduating from college, Corey Campbell would date Sheree Buchanan, who is the ex-wife of Atlanta Falcons player Ray Buchanan. Sherry Buchanan also appeared on the reality TV show Atlanta X's as well as The Amazing Race. Corey and Sherry dated from about 2007 to 2010 and according to Sherry, things ended very violently and dangerously as she had to take out a restraining order against Corey Gamble for stalking her after she broke things off with Corey. And there is court documentation to prove that in 2010, a restraining order was granted against Corey Gamble to protect Sherry Buchanan. Something I found very interesting about this dynamic, this relationship, was that similar to his current relationship with Kris Jenner, is that Sherry is about 10 years older than Corey Gamble. And as we know now, Corey Gamble is in a long-term relationship with Kris Jenner, who is 25 years older than him. So he must have a thing for older women, I guess. One thing that I do wanna mention before we continue on our confirmed factual timeline is a tip that I received that definitely falls into the realm of speculation, but I found it very interesting and wanted to share with you guys under the pretenses that this is just speculation. I have received numerous tips that all are very, very similar. And these tips came from individuals who have claimed to be familiar or know Corey Gamble from when he still lived and worked in Atlanta. Corey was once a performer in the adult film industry. Multiple people came to me sharing this information and that they had seen him while they were working on certain sets. And obviously I am not going to share their identity for their own protection. I have no idea the genre that he may have been working in. And as much as I love information, that is not a rabbit hole that I want to go down. <laughs> Again, this is just alleged. I do want to get back to our more factual, provable timeline, but I did want to mention that 
simply because so many people message me saying this exact same sentiment. I'm not willing to do the research to confirm whether or not that speculation checks out or not. It was towards the mid to late 2010s when Corey stopped really splitting his time between Atlanta and California and was really starting to make moves in California, Los Angeles. Let's talk about some of Corey's friendships and connections that have ultimately led him to being somewhat of a patriarchal figure in the Kardashian empire. One of the more notable and important friendships we'll mention in this series is Corey Gamble's friendship with P. Diddy. Now I cannot confirm the origins of how P. Diddy and Corey Gamble became such close friends. Upon further investigation, I did discover that Fonsworth Bentley, who worked as P. Diddy's butler, his personal valet, really his personal assistant for a number of years, was enrolled in Morehouse College at the same time that Corey Gamble was enrolled in Morehouse College. I wonder if that connection at Morehouse eventually led to Corey Gamble meeting P. Diddy through Fonsworth Bentley, but obviously we can't confirm this. This is just speculation. Corey Gamble has been close with P. Diddy publicly since at least the mid 2000s to the late 2000s. Dozens of photographs on the internet of Corey Gamble with P. Diddy and his young children that were taken years and years ago. Corey has stated on multiple occasions that he helped raise P. Diddy's children and had a brother-sister-like friendship with Kim Porter, P. Diddy's now deceased ex. We talked about in earlier videos, Corey Gamble was even on the scene when coroners arrived to retrieve Kim Porter's lifeless body out of her home. It really does seem like Corey Gamble has more than just a friendship with P. Diddy and his family. It definitely seems to be more of a familial bond. I also found photos of Corey Gamble with Ludacris, Shaq, and Michael Jordan that go all the way back to 2001 and it seems that they had a very close friendship and would often be traveling on private jets together. I could not confirm the origins of these friendships, how they connected, but obviously there are so many places that they could have connected. In 2001, Corey Gamble had just recently graduated from high school, so it's very interesting to see how many influential connections he made at a very very young age somehow. Before the age of 21 he was on private jets with some of the biggest rappers and athletes. Go to part two. two. Like we just discussed, Corey Gamble has had a lot of close friendships with very influential rappers and athletes, one of those athletes being Michael Jordan. Corey Gamble's Instagram feed is full of him taking pictures of Michael Jordan, watching him on the sidelines while he played basketball. Corey would often travel with Michael Jordan's entourage on Michael Jordan's private plane. One notable friendship that Corey Gamble has that ties back to Ashton Kutcher, who is really close friends and business associates with P. Diddy, is Corey Gamble's friendship with producer Rob Wise. If that name sounds familiar, Rob Wise is the man who produced Ashton Kutcher's television show, Punked, which we have talked about and it was a very problematic show within itself. Another friendship or connection that Corey made before becoming intertwined in his Kardashian era is Scooter Braun. Him and Scooter Braun connected around 2011 and his friendship and work partnership with Scooter Braun really helped propel Corey's career in the music industry. Before Corey stepped into the role of co-manager of Justin Bieber alongside Scooter Braun, Corey Gamble worked closely with the artist Scotty McCreary. What's your name? Scott McCreary. Scotty. Scott. Sir. How are you? How old are you? Sir? 16 years old. In early May of 2012, Corey Gamble posted a screenshot on his social media of the Billboard Top 200 list that showed Scotty McCreary's album, Clear as Day, listed as number one. Corey captioned this photo as, it feels good to own a piece of a number one record and album. Quietly. So somehow Corey Gamble was financially invested into Scotty McCreary the same way he was financially invested into Justin Bieber. But we do know that Corey Gamble was not ever listed as a manager for Scotty McCreary. So I'm not sure to what extent Corey owned or owns Scotty McCreary's album. Late May, Corey Gamble posted a screenshot of Justin Bieber's album, 
believe onto his social media and captioned it. After reading all of the reviews, I may be responsible for another number one album. As we know, Justin Bieber's album Believe soon after it was released would go number one and spend a decent amount of time near the top of the charts. Again, I'm not really sure to what capacity Corey Gamble is financially invested into Justin Bieber's music, but neither here nor there. Before becoming intertwined with Justin Bieber, Corey Gamble seems to have made a really good impression on Justin Bieber's ex-girlfriend, girlfriend at the time, Selena Gomez. In 2011, Selena Gomez tweeted out to her fans, all encouraging them to go follow Corey Gamble. Because of Corey's connection to Scooter Braun, who was also Ariana Grande's former manager, Corey would often work closely with the pop princess. Many have even speculated that the reason Kris Jenner landed a role in Ariana Grande's Thank You Next music video was because of Corey's connection to Scooter Braun and Ariana Grande. In 2014, Corey Gamble was officially designated as Justin Bieber's tour manager, and I think it is interesting that Justin Bieber was really, really struggling with substances and spirits whenever he was working closely with Corey Gamble. Certainly it could have been a coincidence, but it was very odd to see Justin Bieber struggling so much while he was closely managed by specifically Corey Gamble. Go to part part three. Corey Gamble has also had a long-standing friendship with Ellen DeGeneres, former television TV show host, and her wife Portia. Even after Ellen DeGeneres' many, many scandals, Corey Gamble still remains very close friends with Ellen and Portia. While Corey Gamble was working closely with Scooter Braun and in hand with many young pop stars, Corey would often post himself traveling on luxurious private jets. In quite a few photographs, private jets that Corey is traveling on look a lot like P. Diddy's private jet, which certainly would not be a surprise knowing that they go back so many years. But Corey Gamble's connection to P. Diddy, along with his close proximity to many young pop stars, is sinister to say the least. Now, this next connection and friendship is very, very strange. Not only is Corey Gamble connected to very influential figures in the celebrity realm, he is also well connected to influential figures who work behind the scenes. Corey has said that he's close friends with a Russian-Canadian billionaire named Alex Schneider. Not only is Alex Schneider a major investor in a myriad of different businesses in real estate, he is also the owner of the Grand Prix, which he purchased from Eddie Jordan in 2005 and renamed it to Midland F1 Racing. Corey Gamble has said that Alex Schneider is one of the coolest guys that he knows. I was absolutely fascinated while I was doing research into Alex Schneider as Alex Schneider was a major investor and partner alongside Trump in the creation of the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Toronto. Alex Schneider and this disgraced former president have a lot of real estate partnerships that still stand firm to this this day. Not only this, but Alex Schneider was actually named as a key link in financial collusion between Trump and the Russian government in a 2017 investigation. It's not a conspiracy theory, this is public record. I think we all know that this connection goes a lot deeper, but I think I'm going to leave it at that and we're going to get back to the tea. Corey Gamble has also had a long-standing friendship with the father of Miley Cyrus and country musician Billy Ray Cyrus. Their friendship dates all the way back to when Billy Ray Cyrus still had his infamous mullet. Corey Gamble and Billy Ray Cyrus's friendship goes all the way back to long before he met Kris Jenner, but it spanned all the way to his relationship with Kris Jenner. And before Billy Ray Cyrus and Tish Cyrus divorced, Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble would often go on double dates with the celebrity couple. Another very well-known couple that Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble would double date with is Babyface and his wife, Nicole. If you're not aware of who Babyface is, he is a very influential singer, songwriter, and producer in the industry, and he has been since the late 80s. Babyface is also a very, very close associate of P. Diddy. Just last year, P. Diddy and Babyface wrote and produced the song Kim Porter, which was basically Diddy's ode and tribute to his late ex who passed. 
speaking of dating, let's talk about how Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble even met in the first place. According to the couple, the two of them met on a yacht while celebrating a 40th birthday for a fashion designer that was hosted by Kanye West in Ibiza. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I do not believe that these two are in a real relationship and a lot of my opinion really stems from simply their body language. When we see Corey and Chris out in public, it really looks like he's her security. Corey's been given a fairly warm welcome into the Car Jenner household by the girls and the women of the family, but at least two of the men of the Car Jenner clan have loudly vocalized that they are uncomfortable with Corey. Go to part four. Part four, Kanye West has accused Corey Gamble of being a part of the CIA or being a Fed in some sort of capacity. Kanye has said multiple times that Corey Gamble is not to be trusted. Corey is a plant. Corey was, you know, Puff Daddy, Nanny, Manny. You got what I'm saying? Then he was with, with Justin Bieber when Justin Bieber got in trouble. Scott Disick is another figure who has vocalized his concern about Corey's mysterious past and how quickly Corey and Chris jumped into a very serious relationship. Scott and Corey have also gone head to head in the past when Corey shamelessly threatened to physically discipline Scott's daughter Penelope at a family dinner. Her ass, and I'll explain to y'all later. What? I would have whipped her ass. You would whoop Penelope's ass if she scratched you? I would give her a spanking for sure. My daughter? What are you talking about? Scratch me. You would whoop my daughter's ass if she touched you? No, scratch me. You would whip my daughter's ass if she scratched you? A little six year old girl? That's what are you talking about? That's the problem. Stop it. Scott reacted like any parent would in this situation. I think this interaction was very worrisome to a lot of fans, especially this generation, as we unpack and educate ourselves on the harm that comes along with physical discipline. Just a couple years after Corey Gamble began his relationship with Kris Jenner, we had a new president elected in 2016. After that president was elected, Kanye West and Corey Gamble personally flew out to New York City to congratulate Donald Trump personally. Now, this is the second time we have seen Corey Gamble in very close proximity to important government officials or affiliates of government officials. And unfortunately for Corey, it doesn't appear that he is going to be beating the Fed CIA allegations anytime soon. Right now, we are all patiently or impatiently waiting to see if Corey Gamble will be named in any kind of capacity, having some form of involvement in the current P. Diddy lawsuit that's going on. As we know, Corey Gamble was connected to P. Diddy through almost every controversy that P. Diddy went through. Some people believe that Corey Gamble is the Olivia Pope of Calabasas and a fixer and a protector of the Kardashians, while others believe he may just be an opportunist. At this point, I would say this is still a lot of very surface level information and I think there's a lot more to find out. So we're gonna stay on top of this and I wanna know what you guys are thinking in the comments. I wanna know if any of this information surprised you. I'll see you guys in the next one.